Dr. Ron. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Helen. And greetings, everybody. I'm so glad to see all of you. And thank God for today's forum and the presentations by Dr. Bill Pottinger and Dr. Joseph Cho. We're really blessed to hear from these two men of God who are also highly competent to instruct us in the use of AI in our times. I believe their presentations have been very helpful to all of us. In recent decades, we have been through an absolute revolution in technology. When I was a boy, most homes had a radio, a tape player, a television with only three channels, and a telephone which was attached to the wall with a rotary dial. And in many cases, the line was not private. It was a party line shared by a whole block of people. So anyone who needed to make a call had to wait until all the other people got off and the line was free. At that time in the 1960s, the television series Star Trek showed us futuristic handheld devices that could make video calls, analyze data, solve problems and forecast future patterns. We never thought it would be realized. Yet it has become a reality with the advance of smartphones that have gone far beyond what we even imagined. And these days, new technology has developed so rapidly that no one can really keep up with it. It is especially challenging for the older generation and now we have artificial intelligence. Upon request within seconds, we can glean from entire public knowledge bases through from all people throughout history and receive summaries of everything that, that's been thought and taught on certain topics. Like a Gutenberg's printing press in the past, it represents great challenges and also great opportunities. As Christians, how should we regard AI and information technology in general? First of all, I believe we need a humble mind regarding truth. These days, many people refer to my truth or your truth. But we must know that real truth is of God. And real truth is universal. Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And Romans 1.19 tells us that God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been revealed through what he has made. God made the world to operate by natural laws. And science and technology develop in accordance with these laws. New discoveries are simply more revealing of reality. They give us a more accurate understanding of the world and of the creator who made it. And this should lead us to a sense of wonder and awe toward our creator God and to a humble acknowledging that we are creatures. The famous astronomer Johannes Kepler, when uh, praised for discovering new things, said this, I was merely thinking God's thoughts after him. Furthermore, since God created all things, they exist for his purpose and his glory. Colossians 1, 16 and 17 says, For in him, Christ, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Christ is Lord of all and ruler of any and every realm that ever has been or will be. Is cyberspace a realm? It is made for Christ. As we pray for his kingdom to come, this includes cyberspace, the internet, the world of AI. Just as we send missionaries to foreign lands, 
so we should evangelize through cyberspace. And this is especially true in campus ministry. Students seem to live in cyberspace. We cannot ignore this realm. We all know stories of those who stopped coming to Bible study after doing an online search and finding negative articles about this ministry. What can we do? We need to recognize this as spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. Paul said in Ephesians 6, 10, and 11, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. And most of the armor mentioned by Paul is rather defensive, protective, with a belt of truth buckled around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with a readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation. And in addition, in, in addition to armoring up, we need to pray earnestly. We should really pray for God's victory in the cyberspace battle. And we can take our stand against the devil's schemes. At the same time, we should positively preach the gospel and testify to our faith in Christ. We need to take up the sword of the Spirit which is the word of God. This is the major weapon for our offense. It may seem like a small thing when we post a Bible verse, share a word of testimony. It may seem so small and cyber says is so big. But let's remember the story of boy David who challenged the mighty giant Goliath. David had only a sling and a stone, but he slung his stone in the name of the Lord God Almighty. He slung his stone by faith in the power of God, and his stone sank into the giant's forehead and felled him. Our Bible verse, our short message, our testimony are like this stone, though small. They are propelled by God's power and God's purpose. One word from the Bible can pierce people's hearts and demolish all the devil's strongholds, expose his lies, and reveal the truth of God, and even lead to the salvation of souls. Let's believe the sovereign rule and power of our God Almighty and fight the spiritual battle in cyberspace as well. Finally, I believe this present time is referred to by the prophet Daniel. In speaking of the end of the age, the able angel Gabriel told Daniel, many will go here and there to increase knowledge. We are experiencing an explosion of knowledge an explosion of information, and it was foretold by God's messenger. At the same time, Daniel was told, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Amen. Let's hold out the word of life to dying souls. Let's shine like the stars of heaven by sharing the words of God, throwing our stones by faith in God Almighty, and engage in this battle, trusting the protection of God and believing the final victory of our Lord God Almighty. Amen.